Hello everybody, my name is Tree Company and here is Goryokaku Fortress, the most famous structure in whole Hakodate. Hakodate is the biggest city in southern Hokkaido, also the frontier city of modern Hokkaido. But the most famous thing in this city is not this fortress, it's a million dollar scenery. In this video, I will tell you almost a thing about Hakodate, what it is, where it is, how to go, what to do, kind of that. Yes, it is time to discover this fantastic city. Hakodate is the center of southern Hokkaido. It is in the same prefecture with Sapporo, but because Hokkaido is such as a large island, 150 kilometers in a straight line and over 300 kilometers on the roads, you can really feel the enormity of Hokkaido. And this is a journey from the Midwest to the South, not tip to the tip. With population of about 260,000 people, you'd have to double the population of Otaru to even come close to Hakodate. So when I describe a trip up to Hakodate, it's a mid-sized city, not a small town. Small town is a city like Furano, which has a population of 20,000. Hakodate is the most historic city in Hokkaido. It's not just because it's close to Honshu, but it's also interesting to look at the background. When American Admiral Matthew Perry led the global warships at the Tokyo Bay, Japan opened its door to the United States, and Hakodate was chosen as the one of opening ports. The location was perfect. First of all, it controls the Tsugaru Strait. This is still one of the East Asia's important choke points. It's not even in Japanese territorial waters, even though it's between the main Japanese islands. The Strait of Malacca between Singapore and Malaysia and Indonesia is a similar case. And in the Tsugaru Strait, Mount Hakodate forms a natural bay, so they were able to build a harbor without much effort. And so Hakodate became a city where Western powers came and operated. And the Japanese government took care of it because it was a money center. Koryokaku, the Hakodate's famous fortress, is the prime example. Of course, the center of Hokkaido was quickly taken over by Sapporo, which had a much better location. Now the former junior cities of Sapporo is much bigger than Hakodate. But Hakodate is still the gateway to southern Hokkaido, and that's physically forever. And Hakodate's industry is not very important in Japan, but this is the one of the most attractive cities in Japan. So let's take a look at how this Hakodate is now organized. The first area to explore is around Hakodate Station. This is the beginning and end of almost every trip to Hakodate. Hakodate is just a mid-sized city, but Japan is a kingdom of railway, so the station is nicely built. The most common hotels are located around this station. In terms of tourism, you should check out the morning market next to the station. It's a local seafood market like Sapporo's Nijo Market and Otaru's Triangle Market. They sell the lots of different seafood, but what Hakodate is really famous for is squid. Whether you will eat seafood bowl or anything else, but make sure to include squid, it's delicious. And then, there's a minimalist downtown area, with a number of independent izakaya as well as restaurants. There's even bar street called Daimon Yokocho. It's a great place to realize that you are really in Japan. Next up is Goryokaku, which really stands out of the map. It's a modern fortress built by the Japanese government and is shaped like a star to make it easier to withstand bombardment. It's called a Bastion Fort. To be honest, the fortress itself can be quite disappointing. It doesn't have a high tower like other castles. It's very bland, and the usual shape is not visible from the inside. So the best place to experience Goryokaku is not inside the fortress but at the Gorukaku Tower, which is a paid observatory. This is the only place where you can really see the star shape closely. There is also a cafe inside and several historical exhibits, but just being able to see the star shape fortress is overwhelming. And there are no tall buildings around, so you can also see the city of Hakodate too. It's a very different feeling from Mount Hakodate, which I will explain later. And there are other things to do around here. 
You can also find some Hakodate's most famous restaurant next to the fortress. There's Ajisai, which represents Hakodate style shio ramen. There's also a branch of a local fast food chain called Lucky Piero. I will come back to shio ramen and Lucky Piero in the next part. Finally, on the way to Gorokaku Koenmae, it means park front. This is the city's main downtown area, along with Hakodate Station. This downtown is bigger than Hakodate Station. There's one of a few Starbucks, a pretty big shopping mall, classic department store, and a bit of nightlife that the station side doesn't have. But when you add it all up, it's not exactly wow. You don't need to have to stay here. Next up is Bay Area, south of Hakodate Station. You should find Kanemori Akarenga Warehouses. These were warehouses attached to the fort facility, similar to the Otaru warehouses, but now it's a tourist area. The difference is that it's not on the canal, it's actually on the ocean. And it's much more commercialized. In Otaru, there's not much to see, eat, or shopping on the canal itself. But in Hakodate, a bunch of warehouses has been renovated into malls and restaurants. And also there's a Starbucks, there's a souvenir shops, and two Lucky Piero stores. It's really famous spot. I wouldn't call it downtown, but it's a good touristic area. The La Vista Hotel here is the one of the most famous hotel in Hakodate. Hakodate also has a cool hot spring town in its territory. It's not as far as much as Noboribetsu. It's in the east of Hakodate, in the city center, in front of the airport, and it's called Yunokawa. There are ryokans, not super big, but good sized with marvelous ocean view. But the day spots are not much as a ryokan, so it's hard to go there for the onsen, unless you're staying overnight. And there's a tropical botanic garden around here, and there are monkeys. Many of them take bath in hot springs in the winter. If you're in the Yunokawa area, you should definitely check this place out. And the last area, Motomachi and Mount Hakodate. When Hakodate was open, port facilities and commercial areas was built on the bay and at the foot of the mountain, looking over them. Buildings were built for people in high class. This is a feature shared by other opening ports such as Nagasaki and Kobe. Nagasaki has the Oura Catholic Church and Western mansions on the hill. Kobe has Kitano Ijinkan on the hill too. If you've been to those places, it's interesting to compare the feeling in Hakodate. These neighborhoods are collectively called Motomachi District. Let's start with Motomachi Park. The former Hakodate Public Hall is a landmark of its own right. You can enter to the inside. It is a building used by dignitaries when they visit Hakodate. There's a banquet hall inside and nice balcony. You can see the city of Hakodate beautifully. And Hachimanjaka on the way here is very popular because it has a great view of the downhills and bay area. And finally, the church district with its cathedrals and churches. There's not a lot of them, only three, but again, it's on hill, so the views are beautiful. It's interesting to see the mix of Japanese and Western architectures in this area. You can try to figure out which parts are Japanese and which ones are Western. Now we're finally ready to head up the Mount Hakodate and its observatory. You can take the ropeway near the church. It's a bit pricey at 1,800 yen round trip, but the view is worth the price. From the top, you can see not only the city, but also see to the west. There are also a few restaurants and cafes along the way, 
in many ways is highlight of the trip to Hakodate. And the other side of Motomachi, Yachigashira, there are a few small attractions. First up is Hakodate Park, one of the oldest park in Japan. There is also a quiet shrine called Hachimangu Shrine. And then there's Yachigashira Onsen, which is a completely local bathhouse. The only downside is that you have to bring your own towels and shower supplies. At the end of it is Tachimachi Cape, a Korean woman suicide during the Japanese occupation of Korea. Overall, the spots south of the ropeway are not essential stops on the short trip, but you're staying for more than two nights and have time to spare, I recommend visit this area. Isn't it the number one reason people come to Hakodate? This is the highlight of the trip. Hakodate's night view is traditionally known as one of the three best in Japan, along with Kobe and Nagasaki. The big three is just a typical title that Japanese people like to use. You shouldn't think that this place is actually more great than Tokyo or Osaka. You may just understand, oh, the night view is amazing. Here's why I think Hakodate's night view is awesome. The sea is good. The city is also good. So when you see the sea and city together, it's doubly good. But Hakodate is sandwich of a sea, city, and a sea. A man-made harbor on the left and a natural beach on the right with the city in the middle. This is indeed the bad thing about Hakodate. The food is as delicious as the night view. Especially Lucky Piero, I mentioned in Goryokaku and Bay Area. This local chain has several stores in Hakodate. The store design is so colorful. You will notice it everywhere you go. It's even crazier than Don Quixote. But the food is more than that. It's so yummy. The essence is their Chinese chicken burger. A combination of fried chicken and spicy sauce, mayonnaise and lettuce, and the savory bun. My mouth is still watering. I don't think you can leave Hakodate without trying this. There are many other menus I timed, such as a curry and egg burger. They are basically delicious, but they can't match the flavor and impact of Chinese chicken burger. If you go to Piero for the first time, you should definitely get the Chinese chicken burger. Another specialty is the shio ramen. Shio means salt in Japan, so it's simply salted ramen. The soup is a chicken broth that can be balanced with just salt. You may know tonkotsu ramen of Fukuoka with white pork bone broth and Tokyo style shoyu ramen and Sapporo miso ramen. If you just have savory and salty ramen like that, then you try to eat a light shio ramen, it will be a culture shock for you. Oh my goodness, is this a ramen too? And then there's a shop that I would personally recommend. Kantaro Sushi on Omori Beach is a conveyor belt sushi restaurant overlooking the beach. I'm not sure what makes this place too special, but it's really, really good. It costs about 3,000 yen per person, but considering the price, it was the one of the best sushi I have had in my entire trip around Japan. It's a little hard to get there for a day or one night trip, but if you have more than two nights, you should definitely try this. Also, there is Tennen Onsen at Global View Hotel. It's heavenly to eat sushi and take a bath. As a port city born in modern area, Hakodate has a lot to offer. It's similar to Otaru, which has a similar history, but it's a little more diverse. First of all, there are observation decks at Mount Hakodate and Goryokaku. There are lots of shrines and temples and lots of modern buildings. Bay Area's Akarenga warehouses are also very interesting and different. Yunokawa Onsen is also quite unique in Hokkaido, which has a lot of inland hot springs. Yunokawa is a seaside hot spring town, so when you leave Hakodate and look back on your memories, you will be happy that you did so many different things. This is probably a biggest barrier to Hakodate, it's too long way from Sapporo. And that distance combines with Japan's expensive transportation, the cost of trip is so expensive in terms of time and money both. Train, 9,000 yen one way. Bus, 4,500 yen one way. It's not exactly a trip to the outskirts of Sapporo. You should make a big decision before you visit Hakodate. Considering that similar Otaru 
is an hour from Sapporo and cost 700 yen one way. You realize how high the barrier to entry is in Hakodate. It's almost like traveling between two different regions. Hakodate faces Tsugaru Strait, the terrain is generally windy. The dead made a lot of fire damages to Hakodate. Fire starts every city, but Hakodate people couldn't control it. And there are also quite a few clouds, especially in winter. It's more noticeable compared to Tokyo, which has a dry winters and lots of sunny days. These two things combine to make travel disappointing. You go to Hakodate for the night view, but you cannot see the cityscape. There are two cases. The wind is blowing so hard that the cable car is not running. Or it's cloudy and cable car is running, but you cannot see the sea. I think the second is more disappointing because you pay the money to go up and then you get your hop up. But finally, it is dashed. If it's windy, you just give up quickly. It doesn't just end at the Mount Hakodate. A big part of traveling in Hakodate is enjoying the scenery. Formal Motomachi Public Hall overlooks the Bay Area. Goryukaku Tower overlooks the fortress and the city. You cannot enjoy that with the huge clouds. I don't care about the other seasons, but if you go to Hakodate in December or January, I would say that don't expect too much. Hakodate is a medium sized city with an airport. I don't think many people fly to Hakodate from Sapporo. A round trip flight costs over 18,000 yen, so why would you go crazy? So, if you plan to visit Hakodate from Sapporo, buy the Hokkaido Railway Pass. Take the Limited Express Hokuto from Sapporo to Hakodate and spend a day or two days in here. Then return to Sapporo, go to BA or Furano, because this is a pass that covers all Hokkaido. You should go there too. The bus from Sapporo to Hakodate costs less than 5,000 yen, which is cheaper than the train. But the bus ride takes 6 hours, so it's a bit long for a short trip. And for airplanes, even if you fly in and out of Hakodate, it's tricky. There are only few international routes from here to overseas. However, if you're coming from Tokyo or Osaka, you may try a domestic flight. In this case, the Tokyo Hakodate Shinkansen costs about 23,000 yen and takes 4.5 hours, so the airplane has an edge in terms of price and time. Also, Hakodate Airport is very close to the city center. So, in a foreigner's trip to Hakodate, the way which is competing with Shinkansen is East Japan and South Hokkaido Railway Pass. Starting from Tokyo, you can ride JR throughout the Tohoku region and up to Sapporo. 35,000 yen for 6 days is short and expensive, but you can stop in anywhere in Sendai, Aomori, Akita, and it's need to get out of Sapporo at the end. Transportation in the city is by tram and bus. The tram routes are very simple, as you can see. You can just tap your IC card and hop on. And from Hakodate Station, there's a tourist circulator buses. That doesn't show up well in Google Map. There are quite a few different routes. Some go around by the Bay Area, others go to the cable car station. If you want to more information, you can visit their website. There are also two types of passes, bus only and the bus tram. If you think you are going to take more than 4 or 5 rides in a day, you can buy one. But I actually don't think you need that. For example, you go from the station to Koryokaku, and then you go to the Bay Area, then the Mount Hakodate Observatory. So there's 2 or 3 rides. The pass can be inefficient. But you don't want to walk even a small distance, then buy it. And another tip, tram is cool but slow. Even you're moving on the same road as a bus, it's much slower. Top speed and acceleration are both slow. If you have a lot of time to spare, I don't care what you take. But if you're in a hurry to get somewhere, take the bus for the same distance. So these are my introduction to Hakodate. Let's summarize what you learned today.
Yes, this is it. Now you learn about Hakodate itself. Actually, to travel Hakodate is not easy. It's very far from Sapporo, also very far from Tokyo. But I hope you just make good memory in here. This place where I finished this video is a stage of the million dollar scenery, Hakodate Mountain. Uh, thank you for watching this long video and thank you again.